if you assume that this piece is A. And let's go up by B. <coughs> so for each point AB on the old graph, you can find a point A plus lowercase a, B, on the new one. So if old graph was something like this, then the new graph will be something like this. Because for each point on the old graph, you can shift it to the right by A, and you will get the point on the new graph. So, my point is that if you know how this graph looks, then all you have to do to find this graph is just to shift the whole picture to the right. Now, what happens in our example? Y equals 1 over x minus 1. In this case, lowercase a is 1. Well, let's just draw it. First, let's draw it, and then we'll think about what happens. Let's draw it without any Um, okay, we used to have this. As a function 1 over x, right? Now I'm saying that this graph should be shifted to the right by 1. So this is 1. Now, if function was going to infinity around point zero, the graph. Then the new graph, since it's shifted to the right, then this axis, by actually, by actually this line, vertical line, will be shifted to the right. And the new graph will look like this. So we just shifted the whole thing to the right. OK, that's basically it. So we know how to deal with this type of thing. Well, as an example, if you have y is equal to 1 over x plus 1, well, obviously, in this case, a is equal to minus 1. So it should be shifted to the left. That's kind of obvious, right? So we know how the function behaves if you shift an argument to the left or to the right. Great. Now, next exercise. What will be with the function if you multiply argument? What's the difference between original function and the function when you, argue, when you multiply argument by something? OK? Very easily. Let's start from original function, b equals a uh, function of a. Now, for this particular case, let me take as an argument the value of a divided by k. If I multiply it by k and apply my function, it will be f of a, which we, we know it's b, right? So basically, what I can say that a over k times b belongs to this graph. If a belongs to, a b belongs to this graph, then a over k b belongs to this graph. What does it mean graphically? Well, very simple. This is a, this is b. So, if I will squeeze this particular segment from a to from zero to a um, by by the ratio of k, so it will be this. Then the value of the function will be this. So for each point on the original graph, if I squeeze this towards the vertical axis, then I will get the point on the new graph. 
So if my original graph, let's say, was something like this, and I squeeze every point k times, I will probably have something like this. Right? This point is squeezed to this one. This is smaller, but so it, this one will also be smaller, etc., etc., down to zero. It's just an example. But whatever the graph original is, you can always imagine, again, it's not quantitatively, it's only studying, it's only qualitative behavior of the graph. You can say that the graph is squeezed towards uh, the y-axis. Okay? Um, obviously, if you have y is equal to f of x divided by k, uh, it's quite obvious that it will be stretching by k times. Right? It's obvious because then, in this particular case, if a, b belongs to original graph, then a, k, comma, b belongs to the graph of this function. If x is substituted with a times k, divided by k is a, so it will be b. Now, this function, uh, this point, relative to this one, is just uh, stretched, excuse me, stretched k times versus this graph. So if original graph was this, then the new graph will be something like this, stretching from the y-axis to the right. Now, obviously, if you change the sign, let's say minus k or a negative, etc., it will change the direction of that thing. That's obvious. All right, so we know what to do with the graph if our argument is changing. Now, the most complex uh, modification of the argument in this case would be y is equal to f of, uh, let's say, x times a plus b. This is the most general kind of linear transformation of the argument. How to draw this graph? Well, first you draw y is equal to f of x. Fine. Next, what you do, you do y is equal to f of x times a. That means you squeeze it towards y-axis by a times. When you draw that, all you have to do is to, to add argument b, which means if you add argument uh, b, if b is positive, it shifts to the left, basically, by b. Uh, units. So that's how you transform uh, from this graph to this and from this to this purely qualitatively. No, no real uh, studying of the behavior of certain points, etc. All you have to do is the beginning. What does it actually mean for you? Well, it means that something, if you know that um, let's say uh, function y is equal to x squared is a regular parabola which basically goes like this, then you can very easily draw something like y is equal x squared plus 7. You just shift it to the left by 7. You uh, can very easily draw something like y is equal to 3x squared because you can always say, well, I won't use that example, I would use it for the next one. But in any case, if you have something like y is equal to 1 over x plus 1, what does it mean? You draw 1 over x, which is this, and uh, plus 1, it means I have to shift the whole graph to the left, so my vertical axis will be here, and it will be this type of graph. All right, so we know what to do with argument. How about the function? Well, that's even easier. If you add something to the function, obviously it shifts the whole graph upwards by a units. Why? Because if a, b was a point on this graph, then um, 
If you substitute a here, it will be a comma b plus a will be on this graph, right? So for each point, a b of the old graph, the new graph will be have the same a and b afterwards. This is the segment of a on the y-axis. So, if you add something to argument, let's go back, then the graph shifts left or right horizontally, depending on the sign you're shifting. If you, set, if you add something to the function, the graph shifts up or down, depending on the sign of this uh, constant. Similarly, if you multiply the graph by something, then, for obvious reason, it's stretching. In this case, b times k will be a point on this graph. So, for the same argument a, you used to have a b, now you will have a b times k. So every point goes up or down, depending on um, the sign of the k. Okay, so that's even easier. So we can multiply graph by constant, or we can add a constant to the graph. That's why my example, which I started to write, uh, it's easier to consider a, an original parabola, y equals x squared, and then multiply by 3, it means stretch 3 times. At the same time, you can consider this to be... Can I use the number 4 instead of 3? You can use 2 times x squared. And that actually corresponds to the rules which we were discussing before, when we were um, multiplying an argument. Now, if you remember, if you multiply an argument by certain uh, constant, k, the graph is squeezing. And here's a very interesting property of the parabola in this case. This is the original parabola. If you multiply it by 4, then it will be stretched upwards. So it will be something like this. So each, uh, each number would be stretched four times. From here, you go up to here. Used to be on this point, now it's in this point. Hope it's visible in the video. Uh, so that's how you stretch it by four times. But at the same time, I was, tell I was telling that you can squeeze argument by two times. Basically, you get the same formula, right? So parabola is such an animal which if you squeeze it from these sides by two times, you will get exactly the same thing as you will stretch it vertically by four times. Horizontal stretch by the ratio of two is equivalent to the vertical stretch. Uh, horizontal squeeze, sorry, by the ratio of two is equivalent to, horizontal, uh, to vertical stretch by the ratio of four. And you get exactly the same graph. So both ways you get exactly the same picture. This is just a little easier, I believe. Um, okay. So you can multiply uh, arguments and functions, and you can add constants. How about adding functions? Not just constant, adding new functions. Let's say you have y is equal to f of x plus g of x. Two different functions. And they, each of them are, are, is a simple function, so you know the graph. Let's say y is equal to x plus 1 over x. Well, it's not that easy to, to, to draw it by, by what? By using some key values and calculating. That, that's not easy. What simpler thing is, let's just add these two functions together. y is equal to x, f of x is one function, and this is a straight line which goes like this. 
Now, um, y is equal to 1 over x. This is this function. Hyperbola, by the way, it's called. Now, obviously, this function is odd, because if I would change the sign of the x, then the sign of the y will be changed as well, which means I don't really have to think about how the function will behave in the negative side on the negative arguments. So let me just forget about this for a while. I'll just think about how it will behave on the positive sign, south side, and then I will just symmetrically, uh, uh, symmetrically reflect it. All right, so we have two functions. This is one, which is a straight line, uh, and this is the hyperbola. Obviously, zero is a very special point because it's not defined when x is equal to zero. How can we add these two functions together? Well, let's just think about it. They're obviously crossing at 1, 1. Now, what happens before that? Before that, one component, which is 1 over x, is really very, very big. This component of the another function is very small. So if you will add a small component to a big component, well, you will, add, you will obviously get a little bigger, but not really by much. And this extra piece, which we are adding to a hyperbola, and this is the original hyperbola, and this is the piece uh, which we are adding, so we are adding that much. And then we are adding smaller and smaller and smaller. So basically, the new graph will be very much like the old one. It will be approaching the same infinity, but maybe a little bit to the right of the original one. So this is the behavior of the function on this particular, on this particular place. And it should go to 1 plus 1 is 2, actually, from here, from this point. So this is the function. Now let's move to the right of the one. Here, the one over x is smaller and smaller, which means the, uh, this component, y equal x, is mo most important. And for um, uh, addition, for, for the result of the addition of the bigger component to a smaller, we get just a little bigger. And that little becomes even smaller and smaller as we approach infinity. So basically, this extra piece, which we are adding to a straight line, becomes smaller and smaller. So the graph is actually approaching our uh, straight line from above, always being above it, but smaller and smaller distance. Um, by the way, these two lines, which are um, basically, they represent some angle um, where our graph is approaching both sides and approaching uh, basically in such a way that the difference becomes smaller and smaller. They are called um, uh, asymptote. asymptote. Now, um, so these are two asymptote, uh, and uh, they basically characterize the behavior of the function when uh, argument goes to zero, which is one special point, or infinity, which is another thing which we have to research. So basically, that's the line. It's uh, this type of thing, and it's basically inscribed into this angle. Now, using the oddness of this function, because it's symmetrical relative to the zero, centrally symmetrical, I can basically I can draw the same thing here. So that's the graph. One curve, and then another graph. And I did it just by adding two graphs together. Well, let me make one more interesting operation. Adding is easy. How about dividing graphs? OK, we can do it too. It's not a big deal. Let's say you have a function, y is equal to x squared plus 1 divided by x. OK, um, I think I have to change. It's probably not very visible. Uh, I'm not sure this is good. All right, 
So let's divide. We have graph of x squared plus 1 divided by x. Now, what is x squared by 1? Uh, x squared plus 1. x squared plus 1 is a parabola x squared shifted upwards by 1. So it's like this. Now, x, y equals x, is a straight line, like this. Well, let's divide them one by another. Um, obviously, if we approach zero, which is a special point, uh, and let me just make a note that this is also odd function. If I change the sign of x, this will be the same, because it's a square, and this changes the sign, so the function changes the sign. So it's odd function, central is symmetrical. So forget about the negative side. Positive x. As, 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 as x approaches 0, my denominator goes to 0. My nominator is relatively small. It's always around 1. So if x is very small, this is just a little bit bigger than 1. So if I divide something quite... Uh, small, which almost equals, equals to 1. By infinitely smaller and smaller number, I will get infinitely bigger and bigger result, right? So when I approach 0, my resulting graph will, will basically go to infinity. So as I approach 0, my graph goes to infinity. Now, if I approach, <coughs> if I approach infinity, if I approach infinity, um, this x square is grows significantly faster than than x. So the result of their division will be bigger and bigger and bigger. So obviously, my function will go to infinity when the x goes to infinity. So somewhere these two things are connected to each other. So, based, so I have something which is very much resembling my, my graph which I um, draw before that, the function of x plus 1 over x. Well, it's not a coincidence because this is the same thing x squared plus 1. This is the same thing. So by dividing graphs one over another, I kind of um, came to the same general uh, shape of the graph. The only thing which I did not really get from here is that the graph is uh, closing and closing its distance towards uh, the line y equals to x. So y equals to x, the straight line, is obviously um, a symptom for this particular graph, and it's not so obvious for this one. Just the general behavior you can see. But in any case, you divide it as normal things, and uh, everything seems to be working fine. One more division example, and that would conclude our um, graph's representation. One over x minus one times x minus two. Well, first of all, let's uh, picture the denominator x minus one times x minus two. Well, obviously, this is something which has 1 and 2 as 0 points. If x is equal to 1, it's equal to 0, and x is equal to 2, it's 0. Other than that, this is a parabola, this is a polynomial of the second degree, and uh, it's positive on both uh, bigger and uh, in the negative uh, and, and, and positive side and it's negative in between, so it's something like this. This is our parabola. This is our denominator. Now I have to divide 1 into this, by this, actually. 1 by this. 
Well, if my denominator goes to infinity, obviously 1 over this would go to 0. So as parabola goes to infinity here and here, my function will definitely go to 0 on both sides. Now, what happens around the special points 1 and 2? My denominator goes to 0, that means that our uh, result should go to infinity. So, we obviously have two asymptotes here, and the function will go to infinity here and infinity here as we approach roots. Well, obviously, the same thing should go if we approach these roots from inside of this segment, from 1 to 2. But, in this case, my denominator is negative, so the whole function is negative, so infinity will be negative here and here. And it will go something like this. So it will stay negative all the time, but again, it will approach the same infinity as the x is approaching 1 and 2. So these, these, these pieces represent the graph of this function. So that's from uh, basically purely qualitative standpoint. This was my original, just to make it more visible. And this is the resulting graph. So that's how people uh, draw the graphs, and uh, they help them to study the functions. Uh, their behavior, especially, again, very, very important, special points and infinities and asymptotes. These are major characteristics of the graph. You can, again, manipulate with your graph. You can add uh, constants to arguments to the function, which shifts to the left or to the right or to the up or down. You can multiply arguments or functions by certain numbers, which will stretch or squeeze in vertical or horizontal direction. And that's how you manipulate the graph, and you basically can draw anything which is expressible in this formula kind of things. That's it for graphs. Thank you very much. I'll probably um, do some uh, exercises, problems, etc. Uh, but that will be an extra. Thank you very much.